almost ready? Good to go, yes, no? Close, okay. Okay, next up we have cyber warfare games, uh, excuse me, cyber war game tabletop exercises with uh, Gurney Halleck, please give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, as Riverside said, I am Gurney Halleck, if I know my name right. Uh, and I guess I'm doing a talk on cyber war games, uh, tabletop exercises, TTXs. I'm gonna use TTX because it's easier. Uh, I am not pimping my employer, like all the other speakers, and I'm using my hacker handle and not my real name, like none of the other speakers are doing. Anyways, uh, so who I am, I, as if you care. Uh, I've been doing cybersecurity for a while, mostly offensive, uh, aerospace, uh, so I get to play with a lot of equipment and systems that aren't normally what you would think of as, as IT equipment. So that's kind of cool. Um, I've been doing uh, red team work. I've been the red team lead for about three years for TTXs. Um, I am a CISSP, so bite me. Um, I collect a lot of useless computers. Uh, I'm starting to call myself a cybersecurity nihilist in that uh, securing all the things is a noble pursuit, but in the end it doesn't matter, we're all fucked. So uh, that's, that's where I'm coming from, and maybe it's just I'm jaded because I've been working in this area for too long. So what, uh, what is this presentation gonna be? So it, it's my ob observations and experiences doing tabletop exercises uh, I'm not going to talk about any specifics from the engagements I've done because I'd like to keep my job. Um, I like Bruce Potter's comment here that he starts out with every uh, presentation that he does is don't believe anything I say. So this might be a good starting point for you. Uh, if you're interested in doing TTXs for your organization, then you should probably go out and do some more research. Um, I'm going to use the term TTX just because it's easier. Uh, some of my clients are sensitive about using the term war games, so we usually use TTX. Uh, I hate the word cyber. It has no meaning, no meaning at all, um, but I'm stuck with it, so I'll be using it. So a little history for war gaming. Um, probably since people have been able to scratch maps into the sand or dirt. Um, we've been doing war gaming. Um, back in the 1800s, uh, the Prussians put together a game called Kriegspiel. Um, it was a war game, an uh, actual game, and it uh, provided rules for moving troops and artillery and terrain and so forth. But they actually started using it to train their officers. Um, and it proved to be very effective. H.G. Uh, Wells actually came up with a game called Little, Little Wars. Uh, again, it was a game, but it had extended rules such that it could be a Kriegspiel. Um, it's interesting because H.G. Wells was a ar ardent pacifist. We've gone into, of course, modern war gaming. We have you know, War Games the movie. We do tabletop exercises, um, go to high fidelity computer simulations, and all the way to actual troop, troop deployments and live fire exercises. Um, so, but specifically, obviously, what I'm gonna be talking about is the tabletop. So who, who are doing these tabletop exercises? Uh, a lot of them are emergency, re emergency response organizations, state and federal, um, things like FEMA for the hurricane that we just had. Uh, they do uh, tabletop exercises where they play through various scenarios, events, um, situations that they have to deal with deploying or 
supplying and, and so forth to manage those sorts of disasters. The government is starting to do uh, cyber-based exercises where they are dealing with attack events, how they're going to work through it, uh, do remediation, or, and you know, how they're going to deal with these sorts of things. Uh, some companies are doing this as a service, um, and they're starting to be done internally in some commercial organizations. You might not hear a lot about it because they're not really that open about it, but they're starting to do it. So what is a TTX, basically? So it's a simulation, it's a rehearsal, it's a defense exercise. Uh, for a TTX, as in a tabletop, uh, it's paper, paper-based, or it could be electronic-based, but it's not a computer simulation in any sense. Uh, you have selected scenarios. You can, uh, can only do so much in a single exercise. Most of the exercises I do are a single day, and I maybe get to do like four scenarios, so four major attack scenarios, and that's not full coverage of a system at all. It's a face-to-face -face meeting, and that's really important, and the previous speaker mentioned face-to-face. -face. Uh, you get all the engineers, all the developers in together in one room working out problems, and that's a special situation, and you can really see when you're participating in that, you can really see the interaction going on and the problem solving going on. Um, it should be a non-threatening, non-adversarial. Um, whenever I have an engagement, I always bring everyone into the room and tell them, you know, we're not here to embarrass you. We're not here to criticize you or really be adversaries. We're all working together to make the system more secure. And that really sets a tone uh, to make sure that everyone's playing together, everyone's working together with the same objective. So what does a cyber TTX not do? So it's not a pen test. We're not actually uh, trying to exploit systems. It's not a vulnerability assessment. We're not scanning looking for uh, open vulnerabilities. Not a risk assessment. We're not going through uh, and determining the risks of the very system, enumerating them and so forth. We're not going through and doing a detailed review of policy and procedure. Now both some of the outputs of the TTX may include identification of risks. They may include uh, identification of lax policies or gaps in policies, but it's not a review of it. And it's not an audit, so it's not going to give you a checkbox um, on your FISMA or uh, PCI uh, requirements. So what the fuck is it then? And why do I want to do this? It doesn't sound like it's going to do much for me, right? Okay, so what, what does it do? Um, it provides you with an attack simulation. And so you can see or, or discover gaps in your planning for dealing with attacks, uh, both technical and in process procedure. Um, a lot of times when I do a TTX, uh, we come up with some pretty novel attacks that uh, the engineers and the devs have never thought of before. And they're just blown away and they, it's like, I, I didn't know that could happen. And we never designed for that. So there's a lot of learning that goes in there. Uh, like I said, policy and procedure, again, if there's attack vectors or methods that no one's really thought of or considered previously, uh, we can look at policies and procedures that are maybe not covering those aspects of how they, the remediation of the tax. Uh, look at the development process, um, insufficient uh, requirements, insufficient requirements on suppliers. 
people don't think about this. I'm buying software from a third party that's developing it that's in Mumbai. All right, so they're creating the software there. How much would it take to buy off some guy to put a back door in that software? Um, you know, we're shipping equipment um, from China to the US and we're gonna put it in our, our system. Uh, what's the potential for intercept and modification? Um, maybe not in an IT environment, well, well, not that that's never happened, but we won't go into that. But anyways, so th those are kind of things that, you know, are your, is your supplier management taking a look at these things? Is uh, supplier management uh, putting security requirements uh, on your third party suppliers? And socialization, uh, which is really important, bringing together the right people to experience uh, effects of attacks and potential deficiencies in their systems that maybe they ne never knew about. And a lot of times we have, you know, people meeting each other for the very first time. I'm supposed to start that timer. Anyways, okay, so when should you do a TTX? Uh, and this is idealized because it never works out this way. But you'd like to do it really early on, even if you don't have a, a well-defined system. It would be great to get uh, a round table and do something informal, or even just discuss some of the security aspects of the system or aspects that haven't been thought of before. Um, you should ideally be running them through the development process um, so that you know before major milestones, before uh, major releases of the product, uh, you're doing a review of the security, not only in um, technical terms, but also in how the policy procedure aspects of it. And you'd also like to do it over the life cycle. Uh, so many times I see uh, deploy and forget type of situations and the, the dev team uh, or whoever's deploying it out in the field, I, they never think that uh, the threat landscape is going to change, and it does. So you really should be doing, bringing the product back in, uh, doing a TTX over again, and then see how you can improve the product uh, that's already out in the field. Um, sometimes there's problems with that because they cost too much to upgrade it, but I mean, that's a management decision. There's not a lot you can do. If you don't have clear goals and objectives or support from your management and the technical staff, you probably shouldn't do it. Uh, I know it's hard to sell it to your management, uh, but if they're not gonna support it as an engineer, it's just not gonna be worth it in the end. Um, oh, I like Rick and Morty and Fallout, so you're gonna see some of that crap, sorry. Um, so who do you want uh, as participants? You want your sub subject matter ex experts, SMEs, uh, who are your you know, primary engineers, system owners, people who are really smart on the system, uh, your developers, software developers, hardware developers. Look at your integration and test people because um, they know how they're testing it or not testing it. Are they testing it for security or not? They're probably not. Uh, get some customer reps so that you know, how is this product actually being used in the field? Uh, maybe it's not being used the way you thought it was. Uh, again, pure procurement and the um, supplier management. Uh, security, other than the TTX team itself, if you get IT security that's involved with the product. Uh, your managers, well, we'll talk about managers. And, and other people who might be involved. So as I said previously, you really do want some strong goals and objectives. Um, so you want to try to specify it as best you can. Uh, so we want to take a look at this system or this portion of a system, and we're gonna look for specific gaps in 
security technology. You maybe even go to, down to a specific service. Um, and you know what is the uh, response recovery process procedure that we use to handle uh, an event, a security event in this system. Um, you need to talk to your management about this so they're aware of it and they get, give you a buy-in. And you need to know what sort of data you're going to collect because if you don't know what you're going to collect, then you can't really write the report that your management's going to want. So we got a number of teams. Uh, you would think normally we have a blue team and a red team, a defender and attacker. Um, <clears throat> the blue team would be the system engineers, the software devs, the network engineers that are going to play their everyday roles, what they would do uh, normally in their day-to-day -day job. You've got the red team uh, who are hopefully security experts. Um, and a lot of times, especially in my case, I I'm not an expert in the system we're going to review or we're going to test. So uh, I'm at a disadvantage a lot of times. And I have to spend a lot of time doing my homework to figure out what the system is. And your red team ideally would be independent of any of the development of the product. There's a couple of other teams that are very helpful. Facilitators, you really should have some facilitators. I've been lucky to have a really good group of facilitators uh, that help us put the event together, do the scheduling, uh, pulling together the right people to be in the exercise who know how to collect data and can do it in the middle of the fray of the exercise. They have to mediate conflicts, which happen. Um, and we give them a heads up of the red team plans, uh, swear them to secrecy. Um, but then they know kind of what the flow of the game is going to be. Uh, you may have some observers. Uh, again, this is where I like sponsoring management. Um, but they need to know that they're not going to play. They cannot play. And ideally, when we have management come in, we might have them come in and say hi and make a little talk uh, before we get started. And then we usher them out. Because you don't want <coughs> your blue team, especially your blue team, to be playing with management breathing down their neck because um, they're going to end up playing, may or may end up playing politically correct instead of technically correct. And uh, certainly you want the technical aspects to come out. So red team prep. Um, my mantra has always been no magic. So when you develop attacks, uh, in the exercise, uh, it's you don't say, oh, this server is magically compromised. Um, or, you know, this wireless device is magically compromised. Um, you want to have some references, either exploits that have already happened, theater theoretical exploits, um, some, some sort of reference that when you run your attack, um, you can provide proof or at least indicate probability or possibility that this exploit could happen. Um, normally, when I do mine, I'm forward looking. I'm not looking at what is today's CVE or last week's CVE. I mean, you can play those if you know the exact configuration, you know, oh, this Linux is 10 years old or something like that. Uh, you could go back and, you know, see exactly what it's vulnerable to. But I like to push forward uh, since um, we want to see what's coming up, what's going to be the next thing so we can prepare as best we can for the next thing. So that's why I look for, you know, some proof of concepts or a paper here at Torcon or something like that that I can provide to the blue team and say, this is how this happened. Facilitators, where are their prep? They get 
a lot of shit. And I have to put a lot of respect on them for what they do, or at least for me. Um, they have to wrangle management, do the scheduling, educate uh, the blue team and the red team on how the, uh, the game is played. Um, they get to manage uh, disgruntled blue team members uh, who can get very excited and pissed off and um, infighting between members in the blue team. And so that's, there's a lot of management that goes on there. Uh, and the blue team itself, like I said, they're just playing their normal everyday job. So they come in knowing what they need to do in a normal situation while they're working at their desks or whatever, and they have access to any resources they would normally have, either you know documents or uh, on the network or whatever. So I'll go through. Did someone snicker? Um, so injects. Uh, when we play the game, we have injects that we give to the blue team. Uh, there's a couple type of injects. Um, we do red team injects, and those describe the effect of the attack, but not the attack method. You, you don't want to give away how you're actually attacking, although at some point you might have to provide that proof that I talked about previously. But you don't want to tell the blue team how you've actually attacked. You want to give them the effect of the attack, uh, just like someone would discover when they're doing log analysis or, or you know, a service goes down or something like that. They're seeing the effect. They're not necessarily seeing the attack actually occur unless we're providing that. And so what the blue team does is they provide a response, uh, what they've done to mitigate the attack event or the attack effect. Uh, they can also send back uh, questions and clarifications to the red team. A lot of times the blue team is, they're not security experts, uh, so you have to kind of explain to them, you know, this is what happened and this is why you saw it. Um, we also do external events. So that may be something, it's not a red team events, but you know, um, news reporter comes in and wants to talk to your CEO, law enforcement comes in and your chief engineer is pulled away for two days talking to them, so he's now out of the picture as a resource. Um, those sorts of things, uh, uh, some sort of service outage, a customer you know, screaming at you, why is my you know, service down or whatever. Um, and we also do tracking uh, so that if you're using physical paper cards or if you're doing it electronically with messages or so forth, you, you're getting timestamps on those. So later on after the TTX, you can recre recreate the flow of what happened and use that for your documentation. So hopefully you can see, see that. So here's kind of just a flow diagram. Uh, you have your, uh, these external events and your red team injects going into the blue team. Uh, blue team is sending back responses. You get a volley going kind of attack, uh, response, attack, response. And that continues until you meet your exit criteria. Um, and that could be your goals and objectives have been met. Um, sometimes you've just played out the game, you just don't have any more moves to go. And a lot of times hey, you got time called. Uh, you just haven't been able to get the full gameplay in the amount uh, that you have. Like I said, I'm lucky if I can get four scenarios in in a single day. And depending on how quickly the blue team or how much infighting the blue team is doing, um, you can burn up a lot of time. Question. Yes. Um, you mentioned the blue team a little bit more than I yes. Know, you just tried to uh, use the injects in the case of service packs or whatever to cause more. 
Sure, we do. Um, so uh, in some of our, well, in a lot of our, our scenarios, you may have uh, an event occurs that is pretty public and people are tweeting about it or putting Facebook posts on it. And so the news media starts you know, knocking down your door or you know, your customers find out about it or your management finds, finds out about it. Um, so, I, I mean, a lot of exploits that we see now, that's the sort of things that happen. It, it will hit Twitter um, and the cause of the event may not be fully known or researched, but it's hit the news already. And you get in a situation where, you know, your CEO may not know what to say. You know, we're still researching it, but people want an answer. And that, that's part of your process, too. You may need to have, if you come up and say, well, we don't even know how to deal with this in, in the press when something goes wrong, well, maybe you better have a policy about or a procedure about how you're going to deal with media uh, when something bad happens. So when a blue team doesn't really know how to play through a scenario, and sometimes they just say, I don't know how to start or do something, how do I deal with this? Um, it may be a situation where you don't have any process to deal with events. Uh, we, we've taken a look at the NIST cybersecurity framework and used the lower three portions, which is detect, respond, and recover. So um, at a high level, that's we, what we would tell the blue team to do. You know, detect, figure out what it is, do your mitigation, and then get the system back to normal operation. So work through that process and go through the discovery of you know, what your gaps are or what you're lacking. Common issues. So I always get, there's always one person who's going to say that can't happen. Um, and it's usually someone who owns a system, who's been working the system for 20 years or something like that, and uh, thinks that, you know, this system cannot be hacked because I created it. I have a Plumbus 2000 in it that has a WAF, and you can't hack into it. Oh, well, I, yeah, I don't have WAF filters in the WAF. Uh, but you still can't hack it because it's got a WAF. I, I have the buzzword, so it's secure. Um, so you have to have the facilitators to, again, you, well, you go back to no magic and you can say, okay, you know, here's the attack and here's the backup, the references, you know, everything to say, you know, this is why it could possibly happen. And then you need to have facilitators to go in and say, you know, we need to play through the scenario. We need to get through it. Uh, don't fight it. You know, after the scenario is done, we can talk about why you think it wouldn't happen. But let's just get through it. Uh, a lot of times the blue team will go down a rabbit hole. Um, those external events, which may be press or, you know, uh, another business sector gets hacked with some sort of exploit. Um, sometimes the blue team will latch on to that and just beat on that when there's another attack vector that is the main purpose of the scenario. And sometimes you have to go in, the red team actually has to go in and kind of say, well, you know, you guys got to come back. Uh, you're going down the wrong way and you're wasting our time, so you need to go focus on this. Um, Internal conflicts, I've had people almost yelling at each other. I've had people bullying each other. Uh, I've had quiet people who have really important things to add to the conversation 
who are being bowled over and don't get a chance to talk. Uh, so you get a lot of internal conflicts. You get a lot of pointing, like, oh, well, it, what, that wasn't in my requirements to do this security thing. That was in your requirements. And, well, it wasn't in my requirements. So, was, so you get a lot of those things. And obviously that brings up you know, some important gaps that you're discovering. Uh, blue team always usually get, gets pissed off at the red team. Uh, we're being mean, we're going too fast. Uh, sometimes I go fast on purpose. Um, things don't happen in the vacuum. Things don't happen at the pace that you would like them to happen. So I may hit them with three or four events, one right after another, and they're freaking out. And well, yeah, that shit happens in real life. So you're gonna have to learn how to deal with it. Um, Sometimes they're just befuddled and say, what are we supposed to do? And you have to help guide them a little bit. Oh, and sometimes, like I said, the, the red team doesn't have, they're not experts in the system necessarily. So sometimes the red team makes incorrect assumptions and we just have to cop to it and just say, okay, we made the wrong assumption, but let's just finish going through the exercise. Data collection. So it could be quantitative or qualitative. Uh, since you're kind of playing a round table or, or, or a game, you may not necessarily get a lot of uh, quantitative uh, results. You may come to realizations that we're, we're lacking in this area, or maybe we're, we're strong in this area. Um, but it may not be numbers necessarily. Um, you may find gaps in, in RACI, if you're familiar with that, um, where people who are as re responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed, and you see that someone's not getting the information that they're supposed to be getting so that c they can make important decisions, or someone's getting too much information uh, when they really don't need it. You know, They just didn't need to, get a, you know, a quick status report. They don't need to get a whole data dump on them. That's not gonna help them. Um, you may pick up uh, the unconsidered attack scenarios, I think that we, we talked about, and the, the supply chain and supply chain or lack of supply chain requirements. Uh, supply chain is becoming a, a really big issue, especially in like where I work in aerospace. Um, not only because we source parts and systems from all over the world, but we have some people who don't like us, and we need to think about that too. Oh, and security life cycle. Um, as I said before, it's, sometimes it's just deploy and forget. Um, and some developers have, they'll have their software life cycle. Okay, we understand that, we're software devs, and we know how to do that, um, but we have no idea about a security life cycle. That you know, we need to do periodic reviews of system security, even if it is deployed in the field. Post-game review. So you wanna get everyone together, everyone who played, get in there. Um, we want everyone to have equal opportunity to speak, as I said, Sometimes people get bowled over, um, but we need to manage the after game discussion so we can really get all the information that's been discovered. Uh, you wanna find those aha or oh shit moments. And I've had a number of oh shit moments. And those are good. Um, sometimes they're, the ahas are, we did a really good job in this area or oh shit, but well, we didn't have any idea about that. Get those improvements, uh, get feedback on the event itself so that when you do another one, um, you can do it a little bit better. Then, yeah, you have to present it to management. Um, you wanna give them 
if you've ever had to work with management before, probably most of us have, uh, you need to give them some actionable, actionable items. So, you know, you can say these are the technical gaps in, in our, our defensive systems. Here are technical gaps in our policies and procedures. Um, you know, and then give them, <coughs> you know, a schedule and plan of action. You know, we're going to work on these and get these fixed and that. Um, you're probably never going to get everything you want. Um, but hopefully you can get a buy-in on some of it. Um, it's always, you know, tough to present to management. Um, but if you can give them enough things that they can make, you always give them like two or three options. So, you know, you give them the one you want, and then you give them the one that you don't want, and then you give them something terrible. And then hopefully that guides them to pick the one that you really want. So wrapping it up. Um, so yeah, TTXs can be. Oh yeah, pickle Rick. Pickle Rick. Um, so TTXs can be really helpful uh, for your organization or for your products. Um, make sure you have clear goals and objectives. Uh, without that, you know, maybe you're just doing it for fun, but you know, really need to get some good output from the exercise. Uh, get the right people, and that's a tough to do, and that's why I have some really good facilitator people, um, because you want to get a small group of people, but a small group of very expert people. And... That's it. If there's any. <laughs> is there any questions? That That's a guinea pig that likes a carrot, by the way. Are that's. I haven't met one that doesn't like a carrot. Well, that's my standard answer. So, I mean, what can you do? Did I hear, see a question? question here? Yes. So I guess the question was, how do your facilitators get experience if they're starting from zero? <clears throat> well, one good thing is if they can participate in another one, in, a, in another TTX, um, either with uh, someone, another organization you work with, or a partner, or even with maybe uh, a college uh, or government agency. A lot of colleges are doing these. Uh, so if you can get keyed into that, and they can get experience with that. Um, doing some research, obviously. Uh, s doing something really small, you know, just with a few people. Doing just a round table. Just having a couple people. Uh, you know, you don't have the red team off in a closet somewhere, but you have blue team and red team sitting across from each other, and just start discussing it. And as you build up, that experience, then you can go on to uh, s something of a larger, s larger scale. Anything down there? Yes. Uh, so the question was, what is the typical size of the teams? Um, my red teams are five to eight, depending. I usually don't want more than five because then it's getting, I'm sorry? Okay, the blue team, I have worked with like 10 to about 50, which is really hairy. Uh, it's hard to manage all of them. And in the scenarios, maybe not everyone is playing because it's different areas of the system. So sometimes you've got people not doing anything during a scenario, which is not great. 
So you want everyone involved. Uh, more questions? Any other questions? Question one, two, three. No? All right. Hey, thanks. <laughs>